real name Raphael Antonio Kinsey. Okay. Um, my uncle Larry, he was uh, stationed in Spain. And um, when he got back to the States, that was when I was born. So to, uh, uh, I don't know, my mom let him name it. So uh, that's what he came up with. But uh, the whole while, my mother knew she was going to call me Toby. So she was like, whatever you name him, name him, make sure I can squeeze Tony in there from somewhere. So that's where Antonio, uh, um, my role model, in a sense, was my Uncle Larry, who named me, um, because I saw him raise three generations of children out of one household. And to this day, he's still raising great grandkids out of that same house, you know? Still now, my influence musically, Wow, Big Daddy Kane, Karis One, you know, um, when they talk about to me who's the best rapper ever, Karis One. I mean, when you look at an MC, a real MC, you know, he had damn near five years straight uh, uh, entertainer hip hop of the year, you know, uh, when it came to freestyles, I mean, Nobody could touch him for about eight years straight, you know, when it came to writing in-depth songs about stuff that you wouldn't readily hear, you know, black cop, black cop, that, you know, it's like stuff like that. That was my influence, you know, um, rock him, you know, when they started, again, talking about stuff that no one else was talking about, you know, um, the the struggles of blacks the the uplifting of blacks the you know the society we live in no one no one talks about that you know so musically those were the cats that really got me started and really got me just in love with hip-hop now mind you you know i was on the corners in k-town when i was 16 with my shell toes on and the fat laces my kangol and name belt with my boom box and you know in the corner of my uncle's store breaking and popping and you know so we started way back when hip-hop first started but you know i really didn't get me get into it artistically until you know i was about maybe shit 1920 you know and from then on it was you know pretty much me trying to do me you know it wasn't like there was an influence after that as far as 1986 mm -hmm. Um, I'm in college at El Camino uh, in Torrance, and um, one of my homeboys named Cooley, uh, he asked me to write a song for him because he had a friend that produces music. Um, so I started writing, you know, for him because I was rapping everybody else's stuff, Rock Him and Karis One, and you know, I had the voice and my flow was nice. So, you know, going with there, he's like, Tone, you know. You should write for me. So in writing for him, I found it was easier if I wrote for two. Because he can say his line right when his line is finished. I can come jump in on top of him and we just keep it flowing. And uh, so we became a duo. Cooley Cool and T-Money. So uh, we started working on it. And to work on it even more, he asked me to come stay with them. Now, mind you, his dad lived in a million-dollar house up in the hills with a black bottom pool on the balcony overlooking the city, uh, convertible Rolls Royce, three Benzes. So then he bought a club like a year after I moved in. And um, next thing you know, we're running the club. I'm doing shows, opening up for big names. And, you know, just because I could. I had nothing pressed up. I just had instrumentals. So I go on stage with my instrumentals and I tear it up. Next thing you know, you know, um, you got to follow it. Yeah. Everybody's like, yo, man, you for real. You know, I'm doing freestyle sessions with Pac in the house and Ice T and Cube and all these cats. And when I dropped the mic, wasn't nobody picking it up. Um, you know, dealing with uh, the label Nelly is on for real entertainment. Uh, they wanted me to do eight more songs just like Baby Please. I'm like, but I can't do songs like My Destiny and Passion, you know, where I talk about the God in me. Oh, wow. Hurry, think you want to see who's your friend? Need a place to live and see which one lets you in? Guess I knew for 20 years, act like they ain't know me. 
didn't want to bring up what I didn't say you owe me. That's when a polar bear came to my rescue, gave me another outlet for me to bless you. For all to this song, sums it up nice. If you're going to have dreams, then you're going to have to sacrifice. What? Or do you just picture what you want me to be? Four beautiful kids. Um, two daughters, two stepsons. Um, they're stepsons, but they're mine. Um, How old are you kids? I have a 19, about to be 20 year old stepson that's in his uh, second year of college uh, studying civil engineering. Um, I have a 16 year old daughter uh, who my company is named after, Tierra. Um, I have a 15 year old uh, stepson named Ronnie. Um, and a beautiful seven-year-old daughter named Erin. Yeah, um, my daughters look exactly like me, just without the beard. <laughs> um, uh, divorced about two years ago. Um, don't know if I'm going back there again, but um, I, I truly respect and cherish the foundation of marriage. Would love to do it again, but you know, again with the society we live in and the mentality that, you know, a lot of the people are carrying, marriage isn't a foundation that they're really interested in, you know, because like with my 16-year-old and my 15-year-old, they tend to think that the material things make the person. You see, they're kind of lost in this world too, you know, being worldly, <laughs> you know, thinking that the material things make the person when it's the spirit that makes the person. You know, it's, it's the actions of that person that makes and dictates the person, you know. God has blessed you with a spirit that's his. Some will try to tell you that it's not, but it is. In God's path, you should try to walk daily. I'm telling you your roots like my name was Alex Haley. Trying to tell the world that God does live. And hope you get the picture for this modern world gives. And leave you doomed in the land of the lost. I'm trying to get my point across and will at all costs. I want the everlasting crown I was promised. I want to see his glory, so I'm always paying homage to the most high, because most men lie and use the word of God to get a bigger piece of pie. That's why I never sugarcoat what I speak, because the same things you sow will be the same things you reap. And God's watching every last thing you do. So when he comes calling, tell me what you're going to do. And why y'all trying to figure out what's always been? He didn't just find you, you just found him. And I'm finding it hard to keep quiet. I'm going to spread his word and give a damn if you want to buy it. I can't deny it, I speak how I feel. And this is what I like to call keeping it real. I might be preaching, but it's all hip hop. If I was laying comatose, I would still rock and roll strong till my last breath is gone. My body might be dead, but yet my spirit lives on. And on, my, on this microphone, I have to anoint. So if you ain't trying to hear it, that means you're missing my point. Uh, if you want to check me out, go to myspace.com slash Tony Kinsey. T-O-N-Y-K-I-N-S-E-Y. Or if you want to hear the music and the video that we're shooting tomorrow and uh, Tuesday, uh, you can go to um, myspace.com slash Tony Kinsey songs. Um, and they can go on YouTube, myspace.com. Uh, no, youtube.com slash Tony Kinsey. Uh, check out uh, another song I did on a TV show. But, um, We'll have the dot com back up and then dot net in a second. Play these stuff, so stay tuned. <laughs>